it very much felt like we were we we're running the D2C business with a B2B mindset, which is essentially, mm. look, here's a sale agreement. Here's the POS we may have agreed. Here's the promotion. Let's go and let's expect results. As you know, I think your comparison is almost to bricks and mortar versus online. You know, you walk into a store and you treat every single customer the same. It's like, Christ, we're getting 100,000 plus sessions here. Yeah. We need to deliver something different. Hey Cam, how you doing? Hi Ian, you are good? Yeah, we're good. We, 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 I think we've done um, about the same amount of prep as Mark and I do with our podcast where we've ju literally just, we're just running, we're just going. Straight into it, eh? I was going to say, in. we've known each other for long enough, haven't we, to uh, hopefully have a productive yeah. conversation. Well, that's it. Yeah, we'll, we'll hope. Yeah, we'll hope. We may drift off again and in tangents. We'll try not to talk about the weather. Yes, I'm but brother I was going to say, to be fair, the sun's shining at the moment, so it's not too bad. <laughs> not in Manchester. Not in you Manchester. you got rain at the moment, or? Yeah, it's always, yeah, it's raining this morning. Yeah, yeah. Typical, yeah, I was going to say, special. I always forget to pack my umbrella when I come down to your, uh, your office as well. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, just, to, just to introduce yourself, Cameron, I'll let you introduce yourself, but, uh, but essentially... You are the pioneer of Grenade's online strategy. Um, so who, just talk about, talk a bit about Grenade and talk a bit about you and how long you've been working and what's been going on. Yeah, it's spot on. It's a flattered intro as well. Um, <laughs> so started out sort of just under 10 years ago and um, scaling DTC brands. I think we started working together almost two years into that journey. Um, Worked for an international uh, housewares company before Grenade and then started at Grenade around two and a half years ago. Came into the business as an e com manager, soon became their head of e commerce, and almost with you guys, was with the business, understood the vision, understood what we were trying to achieve, and almost held the business's hand to scale to where we are today. What I would likely say is it feels like we're just touching the surface. I mean, every time we go back to the numbers, every time we look at the brand presence, you think, Christ, we've scaled, we've scaled. Mm. So it's just managing expectations internally, growing with the other channels. But yeah. in short, um, yeah, scaling DTC at Grenade. Yeah. yeah. And so, so Grenade, I mean, I, I know, I think Grenade to me is massive, massive, massive brand. But what was interesting is when, when, you, when you, you know, in, inherited the Grenade brand and were tasked with going it online, it was actually um, small online, wasn't it? It wasn't, you know, it, it, yeah, it, 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 online was everybody was selling it, wasn't it? it you know, but from but Grenade's actual e-com revenue was really tiny compared Absolutely. to what it is now. Absolutely. So the predominance of revenue was coming from the B two B and wholesale side of things. I mean, look as you'd imagine with a consumer journey, you know, you go to your petrol stations, you pick up a bar on the go. The use case is very much there. There's a bit of ambiguity around, well, you know, do, do customers go online? Do they purchase protein bars in bulk? And mm. you, you almost look at the macro environment and say, well, of course they do. We're moving towards becoming healthier society. We're moving towards almost less time, less attention. So we need to make better decisions for our health. We've got a product that feels, um, feels like it fits that gap. It's just how we translate that journey online. So we've sort of been around now for over 10 years. The brand itself um, almost exploded when Al and Juliet Barrett, the founders of the business, went to a body power expert. They turned up, and I'm fairly sure it's the story. I think they had like 500 quid um, left to almost say, how do we make this big and bold? They turned really? up and said, Sally, we'll, we'll get a tank. We'll get a tank. And we just actually, if you check LinkedIn a month or so ago, it's a picture of all the grenade team, their camo uh, trousers, sort of old school grenade um grenade vests almost promoting this body power piece and it felt like that's what encapsulates the brand well encapsulates what we've done online well as um as well is almost penetrating through quite a noisy space mm. with an effective brand and i feel like we've got a really good brand identity it's just now taking what people see in store that pick up a bar and go and saying well look yeah you can get this in bulk online you can Almost add value, whether that's through community, whether that's through better 
value propositions, which I'm sure we'll come on to, but it's adding that value online and almost saying, well, here's why you should come online because we are taking that next step in the customer cycle. And then I suppose mm. the bigger part of that is making sure that's omni-channeling grenades and entire ecosystem. Because as you said there, we had a fair amount of 3PL presence, fair amount of Amazon presence. It's just almost understanding what we want to achieve as a business, because there can be this perspective that you just go through all of it and drive volume. It's making mm. sure you've got an understanding for the lagging, um, lagging impacts of that. Yeah. I remember, um, I mean, when, when we first started looking at Grenade together, we, there, was, there was a lot of mess, I think, in the, in the market online. Yeah. There was lots of people selling it. I mean, like everybody, I mean, you know, even I think Argos, I think Argos, yeah. Tesco, yeah. Sainsbury's, um, yeah. you know, all sorts, as well as the, like the Amazons and the eBay. You know, there was, mm -hmm. it was just, there was a huge amount of, of sort of market mess, you know, going on, wasn't there? And it's, um, so what, but um, at the time, so just going back a step, Grenade grew, you seem to have really good retail presence. Mm -hmm. Like it seemed to be, you know, there was a time I think where, like you say, you went to every petrol station. I think it still is. You see the grenade bars there. Um, it's an, and and, and a, it's an amazing amount of brand presence. Um, and then, and then I think a lot, a lot of it, I think it was really, that was the, that was the primary driver. And then it was actually saying, well, how do we actually take the problem was though, I think is that we didn't have a relationship with the consumer because the relationship was through the wholesalers and the retailers, and we didn't actually know who the grenade customer was. So had no relationship with them. Absolutely, absolutely. It very much felt like we were we we're running the D to C business with a B to B mindset, which is essentially, mm. look, here's a sale agreement, here's the POS we may have agreed, here's the promotion, let's go and let's expect results. As you know, I think your comparison's almost to bricks and mortar versus online. You know, you walk into a store and you treat every single customer the same. It's like, Christ, we're getting 100,000 plus sessions here. Yeah. We need to deliver something different, something unique to say, well, one, how do we differentiate from those guys almost on Amazon? Because we're not in a game to almost race to the bottom. It's almost manufacturing sounds like we're manipulating a situation, but it's, it's the right inputs to get the right outputs. And I, mm. I don't believe we were straight with that. You know, if we had this principle when I first came in we've got to sell at this price because this is a a concept store in a sense which visually it looked fantastic but what we're not here to do is create the best looking website in the world we're here to drive revenue and most of all support our customers so mm. you look to the buying patterns I mean I don't believe anyone was purchasing a box for that price so it's almost isolating well hold on a second we're creating a bit of an internal fallacy, if you like, here as to this is what we want the strategy to be. We'll do that. We'll hit that number. But if we don't change our mindset, we, we're not going to scale. And I think it was mm. aligning our, our goals as a D2C team to the B2B team and almost scaling with the understanding that, look, that, that is where the business gets the predominance of revenue. So it's scaling yeah. with that in mind, not detracting from what's going on over here, but making sure we've got a value proposition on the, mm. uh, the online side of things. Because as you said, it, it very much, and I see a lot of brands in this situation, it can become the Wild West. Yeah. I think what, what was really interesting is I think because the grenade was so, you know, so big on the wholesale retail, the retail side with retail stores, you know, that then... You know, you rocked up in the business and said, uh, actually, exactly. we're completely yeah. uncompetitive. Like, we, we, we're never going to, like, sell, you know, because we, you were just too expensive, weren't you? You know, and there was no reason to buy from you. And I think the business was like, well, we can't, we can't possibly be seen to be, you know, recruiting yeah. a customer, you know, you know, slightly cheaper or with a discount. And, and, and but, the, but really, what, what's happened is, you've been able to have a relationship directly with the customer. And now, I mean, I remember you saying that if you wanted to launch a new product into a retail store, um, you know, you'd have had to have negotiated with Tesco. You'd yeah. have had to have spent, you know, 50 grand a store. You know, you'd have had penalties if it doesn't, you know, you, you know if you want a gondola end, you know. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, my God. It's, it's like they completely hold you to ransom. But, the, but the, the goal, I remember, was, look, if you can, if you can actually 
recruit the customers directly, you can launch other products in to them, to the consumer directly, without having to go, Tesco, uh, can we have another gondola in? Because we want to, we want to and, they, you know, and they just go, no. Yeah, yeah. So there's massive, be- massive benefits. Hundred percent, and it's almost taken away that black and white, back and forth conversation. To say let let's take a bit of that autonomy, let's take a bit of that brand equity, and almost control what we want to achieve. You know, Grenade Oreo is a great um, a great example of that. And I'm skipping mm. forward a little bit, but what we've done is we've almost said, well, look, let's change the strategy here. Let's become a bit more competitive. Not not lowest price we're, we're not we're not there yeah. and i don't believe we'll ever go there but what we're doing was offering a fair price with a value proposition through loyalty points through gift with purchase to then build that database you know you said with your working model which again i'm sure we'll come on to you said well look let's drop the robots let's look at our lifetime value which was tremendous because we'd relied on that return customer using loyalty points we just not amplified it to say okay hold on a second we've got a got an almost mpd launch site here yeah. first experience of almost a huge mpd with grenade oreo but you could really yeah. see the effects of that i mean came to january i think it was two weeks into the year into 2023 um forecast the start i remember looking at my original forecast thinking oh no i remember a bit optimistic you know are we going to achieve that number within a week it's articles <laughs> everywhere well that's we, what that's what made me that. laugh because i like, remember shit yeah I can't I remember believe doing, it. I totally. I remember doing the, we, looking at the forecast together. I think we both went thinking, "Oh God!" You know, I think you, I think you'd like quadrupled. Yeah. The forecast was like quadrupling the revenue from the previous year, and we looked at it and went, "Ooh, that's going to be interesting." And then, and then start, and then you started to to push, and I think you'd hit the forecast in like the first month for the whole year. And that, and then we had to revise it because we're like, uh, clearly we need to, <laughs> clearly we can hit this. I, yeah, I absolutely remember it. I was sat in, um, I was down in London. I think my partner had uh, a set of exams, and I remember being sat in a coster at something like seven in the morning with demand planning on the line. My MD almost saying, "Well, have we have we not got the stock? What what's happening yeah. here?" We, and it sort of went back and forth. Got some stock to Grenade.com, but what that did show as well as going back to the original point that. This could be that concept store, but in the yeah. right way, it could be our almost flagship to say, right, we're you, launching a product here. You launch it in it. Let's yeah. amplify, let's amplify. Let's win a customer because they want to hear from us on social. They want to hear from us on Google. Let's give them a bit of fun. And that will also benefit the retailers, which I think is almost the irony. If you go back to front, you, you pop a product in, you know, bricks and mortar, sat on a gondola rent. How many people will see that? It's very specific mm. to what you've agreed. Whereas online, it's almost if you create that platform, it can grow arms and legs. And I'm going yeah. to get too sporadic, but you see that with TikTok shop at the moment. You know, it's almost there. Uh, quite a lot of uh, whispers going around about scalability. But if you almost set the principles right from the get go, you can scale. It's just having that mm. real understanding of what can I acquire, and you can, or and you're so much need. more agile, isn't it? Yeah. You're with your with your gondola end in the retail store. I mean, it can take you know years of planning, absolutely. You know, and then you're committing. You don't you know you you don't know how it's going to go. But with with your D to C, your direct, you know, with your grenade shop online, you know, you've got complete control. So let's go back to that because so so we've said at the start you came in and there was there was everybody every Tom Dick and Harry selling selling grenade online. Mm-hmm. You know, from from big retailers uh to you know the small kind of ebay yeah. and amazon and everything in between yeah and so you wanted to create that direct channel so the i remember the first thing was was working out with the margin calculator working out how much you could afford to recruit a new grenade customer for and understanding that yeah you know absolutely and it was quite obvious, wasn't it, that it was like, well, look, because the, the lifetime customer value of, of the grenade was was good. It's like they, they, the, you know, they it, once you got them to buy, yeah. lifetime customer value was much stronger, like double, three times the average, of exactly. at least. And so when you knew that the maths were there, and so you you knew exactly what you could pay to recruit a customer, and that then became 
really like just a sounding board, wasn't it? I mean, that, I mean, I remember sitting down and going through that with you and it was yeah. like, right, as long as we don't acquire a customer for over this price, happy days, go, 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 go. And I think basically spent as much as you could until you hit that. That um, that low, you know, that that lowest ROAS. Absolutely. And then, and I remember doing the drop by drop. And actually, you you you, when we did the drop by drop together, you you actually helped Mark and I with because you added some extra taps, which we thought, now this is quite good. Cameron's got his head in this, and we we then pulled them into our drop by drop because we thought that was really good. But to talk about when you had that clarity of using the drop by drop and seeing, you know, the daily you know, new customer row assets. What, what was going on there? Because, I mean, that, without that, it was like, you know, was, that, what do exactly. you do? Exactly. It, it felt like, and I almost describe it like we had this trust fund off, off the coast somewhere that we could not unlock and could not access, and we knew it was there. <laughs> That's good. It was definitely there. We, we could all see it. It was very much, we'd worked together and we understood how we'd almost scale from acquisition to LTV. Was how we bring that model across into the scenario that we had at Grenade. And for, for me, it was very much a, well, one, look at the LTV over here. What's going on? The reliance had very much been on database sales. So what we'd said, we had a very poor experience with turning on Google ads. MD, mm. rightfully so, almost flagged, well, hold on a second. We're spending this. We're sending them to the site. They're not converting. What's going on? What we'd worked out is that our average selling price through return customers, through loyalty points, they're paying pretty much the marketplace average online. Mm. So it's very much a role of us saying to your point there, Ian, look, got this LTV, got this drag and drop. Let's make this offer more commercially viable to the customer. Let's add a value proposition in. Let's drop the hatch in and put some PPC behind it. The mm. reason it wasn't working before it is very much like you got two stores next to each other on the high street. Yeah. One's selling grenade bars for, I don't know, £3.50. The other's selling £3. Send a load of traffic to the store with sort of £3.50 price. And they say, hold on a second. What more am I getting from over here? I'm going to go next door. So it's just realigning what we were trying to achieve. And again, it's created more amplification for the wider marketplace. So, I mean, you see, for example, now I was speaking to our SEO guy internally, Grenade Oreo alone is getting 12,000 hits a month in the ranking. So mm. by creating that concept, by taking autonomy, by launching our own store, as I mentioned, we're almost creating benefit for everyone in the market and driving desired outcomes. It's so important that you get mm. that right from the input because a lot of brands, I almost think, go with the wrong strategy try and unpick where they've gone wrong whereas you need to go to the start and really yeah. say what are we trying to do what's the job to be done start from here and let's really build yeah. those fundamentals because if you I think, don't you, you're self-fulfilling there uh, prophecy in a sense yeah like. and because i think if you if you if you haven't taken control um of you know be, creating a relationship directly with the actual customer not mm -hmm. the retailer you know, you've got no control of the brand. You, you, you are at the mercy yeah. of what Tesco wants to do, whether or not it wants to put you on, you know, essentially the what middle shelf or the bottom shelf. And, you know, so, exactly. you know, I, I mean, I put, I wouldn't be able to cope if I was a, if I owned a nice brand, you know, it's great. Of course, you're going to get the foot, you know, the, the, the sales for the, the stores, but really it's, you've got no control. You've got no control of it. And, um, and, but, and I think, having the sanity to understand based on the margin and the lifetime customer value knowing what you could what you could afford to recruit a customer totally. and then i think it was tweaking the offer architecture a little bit but like i say not not undercutting everybody because that would be completely wrong mm -hmm. you know but just aligning it so that you weren't miles out in terms of you know what the spend was because in some respects you were competing against yourself like oh, you know right you yeah. were you were selling your grenade, but because everyone else is selling grenade, you're almost you know it, it, essentially selling with someone else's product, and that was the way to think you know you know because yeah. like yeah. It, it, and it's just it, it, it was aligning a bit because you were definitely a bit far out. But then I remember I think and that's what happened. I remember when you know, you know when, when you when, when the forecast just exploded. You know you had like you know you you first first month you'd hit the. Hit the forecast for the year. It was because 
and it, it wasn't just a kind of like, let's suck it and see. Yeah. It was that you could see, and when we're looking at it every day, you could see the exact revenue for, uh, that we were getting from new customers, the exact new customer ROAS, what CAC cost of acquisition we, we, we could see. And you were well within the parameters. Like it was That's an right. obvious, because you'd got that clarity of the data and the numbers sheet, you know, you, would, you could see. That's the you could key, see, right. and you just Yeah. That's the key. Yeah. I mean, I almost jump into your point about having a model set up. Is one thing having that model from the get-go when we're doing the data analysis, but if we didn't have the drag and drop moving forward, how much missed opportunity would, would you get? You know, it's almost then, again, I always go back to a grocer in my local village and I think they know exactly what I'm going to purchase. They treat me well, you know, they'll say, oh, we've got this new fruit that we've had in. Do you want to give it a go? And you almost lean on that as a bit of a, that's how the journey should feel. If we don't have the anchor points going back to drag and drop, we're not going to drive that customer to site. We're not going to train the right behavior. So we've launched now, know what we want to achieve. How do we continue growth? I mean, myself and my CRM manager, Dave doesn't mind me giving up this uh, sort of strategic framework, but came up with a concept called ELAR, which is excite, launch, amplify, retain. And I think it encapsulates that, but going almost before mm. that point is have your anchor points, have your pinpoints. So you can say, well, once you've excited, once you've launched and you're amplifying, how do you amplify further? And I, I do believe that's where you can fall short. You almost feel like as an internal team, I've talked about Grenade Aria for a long time. There's so many people that have not heard of Grenade Aria. Yeah. She, yeah. You're almost fallacy with the banner on site, isn't it, right? You know, team is saying, change the banner, change the banner, change the banner. We've seen it. Like, well, yeah. that's the best banner for our site and our customers are only going to view that twice in a year. So let's hit them yeah. when they see that banner. It, it's very much, again, taking yourself away from what do we feel we want as a brand? What does the customer need? And, and bridging that gap. And I do believe the models yeah. that you provided us allowed us to scale, but have allowed us to continue to scale. And the latter is definitely the most important, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an interesting, yeah, I'm completely with you. It just takes away that emotion and you have that rational. Yeah. And also, I think from, from your perspective too, getting the wider business on board to show them, look, you know, we're, we're, not, just, we're not just asking for a load of budget and a load of stock for fun. You know, totally. because yeah. I feel like I yeah. want to be, you know, I want to grow. It's actually looking at the numbers, look at it, look at the, look at the profit yes. contribution. Yes. And, and, you know, you know, this is, this is it. This is the, the, you know, we can take this market and actually be much more profitable. And that was, it was just night and day, wasn't it? It was without that. Absolutely. I think, you know, you sort of, I think, so, you know, sort of going around and, and, and trying to plead your case emotionally and everybody's got that. And also you're competing against the, you know the guy. No, I don't know they will, if it's a. They will have somebody who will be looking after the uh, the Tesco yeah, account, and he'll be like, "Do What's going you on know?" Over there? Yeah, um, and you're sort of competing. So I can see there's a lot of politics involved in the big in the big brand. Absolutely, I was going to say it's interesting you raised that point. I always had a thought in in the back of my mind. We've all been in those boardrooms as well, where you sit there, and I think I've probably sat in a couple of these sessions with yourself here, where you always sat there thinking presenting this information from an e-commerce perspective it's really black and white you know we see it mm. the writings on the wall consumers are seeing it and Gr grenade does not have this and i'll come on to sort of how we how we push that strategy internally but you sat around there a room full of key stakeholders that are very highly intelligent they know exactly mm. what they're doing with their own channel but there's there's almost a lack of admission for online you know you sweep it under the carpet we don't want to know no pricing's fine it's like wake up, you know, wake up, Let, let's look at the actuality and push forward. And I, I do believe with the, yeah. the Grenade team internally, that's what almost allowed us to push the strategy forward was we had stakeholders that, that knew where they wanted to go, knew where they'd driven the brand, had, like I said, you know, 500 quid at body power with a tank display. It's like, mm. think big, but we're not quite there yet. With that mentality, you know, you, you can go anywhere that you, you want to it's just having the structure to support it and i believe that's what we yeah. lack to be honest we tried a bit of ppc wasn't quite there we pushed a loyalty scheme wasn't quite there once we joined the two together in synchronicity and said this is how the seesaw works like, well, yeah of course it is let's go and i, I think yeah. it was that almost light bulb moment to say 
The guys are very receptive. They support our goals. We've got clarity of where we're going. Cool. Let's let's send this rocket ship to the moon. Yeah. Yeah, and it was it, it was awesome to see that. It was a very it was a huge transformation. I mean, you know, in terms of the growth, I mean, Oreo particularly the Oreo bar, that I think surprised everybody, didn't it? How Absolutely. successful that was. Absolutely. I mean, the MPD thought for ourselves, as I said, you know, we had sites a couple of days after launch publishing the quantities that we'd sold to it, and I was it was almost like yeah. So up here, the kids talking about Supreme clothing drops and whatnot. And you think, yeah, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. You said you had um, people queuing up outside the shops, like, yeah. Pr- did you say you had people? It was absolutely, yeah. absolutely mayhem, to be honest. Good mayhem, yeah. in a really sort of positive way. But um, go back and check my CEO's <laughs> LinkedIn. Some of the numbers are on there. You think, how on earth is a product? This is a consumable good as well, you know. And I think mm. we almost. I would say set the premise, but you look at drinks like Prime, for example, now it's a very similar model, which is that Excite Lord to yeah. Amplify. Yeah. It's almost taking that concept and saying, well, how are the guys building hype? Let's use digital to build hype and let's yeah. harness the hype and let that almost continue. I mean, it's no you can harm test it to online, it. can't you? Sorry, what, what was that? I missed you just there. I was just saying, sorry, uh, interrupt you. Uh, you, you can te- you can test these launches online yeah, totally. much more quickly, much much more cheaply than having to then do a massive nationwide launch or pick some stores and do it. Well, absolutely, yeah, you can do it online. And, I mean, you look at the likes of my protein, a great example. They use their web shop as a test bed for MPD. Yeah. You know, they're re- really clear about that. And a couple of the brands I've talked to internally under the Mondelez ecosystem. Again, very similar is, let's concept this product, let's gain a customer, let's talk to that customer, let's also hear their feedback about the product. Grenade Oreo, great example. This is going to set the world world alight. Let, let's mm. go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. You might have had quite the opposite to that launch, though, equally, and said, well, hold on a yeah. second, we need to pull that back. Let's change this, let's change this. And I, I believe Grenade.com, the, the question more frequently internally is, how do we develop specifics for this store? And that journey over sort of 24 months has been very much building the blocks there because a the conversation would not have happened prior to sort of two, two mm. and a half years ago. Yeah. It was almost like it when it, it was an add on, you know, when, when you first you know, took on the, the, the role well, prior to you coming along. I think it was just like, oh, we've got a shop tick. Yeah, it felt like yeah, it. And, it. and it's, you know, as long as it doesn't cause any trouble. But obviously now the revenue of the has grown ridiculously i mean you know rather than putting figures on the table i mean it's you know it's now a significant channel that you've got a seat around the board table basically you know and they're like uh can we have more of this whereas it was um you know it was sort of just a because it was so so you know so small so what's um what's now so in, in terms of like the journey where you worked out what the what the what the new customer us needed mm-hmm. to be, and you had the drop by drop reports. So it was telling exactly what your new customer mm-hmm. us was. You knew exactly whether you could go faster or slower. And then and then now, you're at the point where, in terms of, aside from the you know new product launches, but in terms of like the math, changing the maths. So, average order value, lifetime yeah. customer value email data capture off rocket team. What, what's going on now like how are you going to continue that growth and what's the focus it's a really good question so again i'd sort of jump back to january 2023 had the mpd google was absolutely motoring created our own search terms it was almost there customers come to us we've got the sessions we, we're absolutely fine in terms of our model structure so we had the number of customers we wanted to come into store we could dial up PPC or dial down based on what we wanted to achieve in the p and as an output. We understood almost what we were doing as a journey on site. Came to the end of this year and said, well, look, we, we absolutely trump budget. So he's sort of 100% up mm. year on year. We've got a mailing list that's now three times as big. This mm. is going to get, um, I'm going to say trickier, but you're servicing a bigger pool of customers and you, you're almost, you're working harder. You're in a different space, you know, you're a couple of million yeah. a year. You've got your own space. You can almost fill it. Once you start getting above that almost 10 million mark in a sense is how do we almost drive those hard yards? And it's more focused decision-making. I mean, 
we spotted it. It was probably September last year and we had a conversation around the scene was how do we make this site feel like it's a home for new customers, give them that clear information, those USPs, why buy from Grenade? What's the value compared to 3PLs? Mm. What's the value compared to Amazon? Why, why shop here as well? What place does this have? Thankfully, we just launched with your team. It looks fantastic. Your new websites that are two weeks ago, essentially encapsulating that. What we've also done is we've got a CDP, so essentially customer data platform, which will help us understand what the customer wants from a front end perspective. It's now very much for us to align those two. Go to your yourself in there. Your, your brother did a great podcast a couple of weeks ago around e-commerce yeah. profitability. It's bolting yeah. the fixed costs and the marketing costs onto that model for us to really understand, you know, we've got the insight now, CDP wise, we've got a really coherent site structure we believe in, you know, we've got our upsells, we've got our post-purchase upsells, we've got our flow set up. The basic structure's there now. How do we drive this in an ever competitive marketplace? You know, you've got a lot more customers as per the MPD. How do we keep mm. driving it? And it's it's making sure we understand those profitability anchors. It really, really is for me. And that yeah. almost change your mindset, say, let's lower fixed as best possible to invest in the customer. That's where we win. It just absolutely fascinates me. And I'm sure you've had experience on this prospecting clients. So I'd sort of ask you about this. How many people you find? don't understand that piece of information yeah i mean do you, a lot. Do you come across that a lot it's it just a lot me. you almost look, yeah that's the bloodline i think um yeah and I, I mean what we were chatting about this before the podcast and um and the reason we were chatting more about so on our number sheet now that we that we build that we that, that we'll be going through this afternoon we'll be showing the the, the we can show pro profit per day uh, profit per day, per week, per month, but also predict the profit in the future based on changing certain scenarios. And the idea of it is that you know if you if your fixed costs are fixed and you you know double your revenue, um, you know your fixed costs are still fixed pretty yeah. much. You know that, that, that so you end up with more profit. And it's whereas what ha what tends to happen is in the business they might go. Right, we're not we're not making so much profit as we need. Right, let's pull back, and they pull back on things that they can, which can be spend and ads. Yeah, and all that does is makes the problem much worse because they're spreading the fixed costs over a smaller number of orders, and they make less profit in the end. And it's having that data just to show it in the clear exactly right. in the clear way. Exactly. And, but you're right. I mean, a lot of people don't. Yeah, they don't tend to know because it's complicated and. Um, and, but I think you go, go back to your point. I think a lot of brands don't don't know, even know what they can pay to recruit a customer because they don't know what a customer's worth and they can't see how many new customers they're recruiting as opposed to everything. You know, that, and so they just get blind with it all and, and, you know, without that. I mean, basically, fundamentally, Mark and I were chatting last night and it's like, it's, it's, it's an arbitrage. It's ju we're just trying to take one number and trying to turn it into another number. And, and, that, and you know, e-commerce, yeah. people get, people really try and overcomplicate it. And it's, in reality is, it's, it's just trying to influence the basic maths. And, and, uh, you know, and all the, you know, the UX, improved UX, and making the bundles easier to buy, and making it look prettier and more trust and credibility, it's all there to influence the, the numbers, the maths. That's the you know, point. That's it. That's the point. And I, I definitely believe you can get lost in this, make the website pretty. I mean, last year we, we almost, I don't want to say nearly fell for it, but there's a few almost, um, say, UX driving brands. I don't want to name them because I'd likely be wrong, but they, they look at your site and say, here's where we can uplift your conversion by adding X, Y, and Z. And you're thinking, but I know that's not true because I understand mm. my numbers. I believe yeah. you've just got to keep going back to that anchor point, say, here's what we're bringing in. Here's what we're not bringing in. Here's how we do bring it in. And as soon as you've yeah. got those building blocks, it makes the conversation a lot easier. But I mean, I've been in hot waters, I'd say not as of recently, but sort of five, six years ago, when you're having a conversation with the CFO and saying, well, this is what I need. You know, we, we need a new site to support this Google spend. And it can all seem like quite substantial costs at the time. Yeah. Providing you've got a model that supports that, you, you should go yeah. for it. But it's yeah. amazing the amount of, well, I said a lack of understanding for what that structure looks mm. like, 
whilst bolting on the top. So you almost, I mean, you could yeah. look at a house, couldn't you? And you could say, I don't have a foundation. My house is subsiding. Let's put an extension on the top and a V-lux. Yeah. And you think, well, <laughs> don't, don't do that. That's absolutely nuts. The councillor sending you letters yeah. every day saying, sort your bottom line out. And yeah. I, I think if you build from the foundation upwards, you can almost go back to that. As we, we mentioned, I was reading Science and X, but they start with why. And that goes back to yeah. that. Don't just try and unpick pieces of your poor strategy that you set to begin with to fulfill what you set to begin with. You say, get the anchor points right. And I think that's yeah. what you guys nail well. And I'm sure that's the majority reason why we continue to work together for pretty yeah. much 10 or so years is that foundational information with, with no BS. It's, yeah. Well, I think, yeah, it's, 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 definitely, it's definitely right. Because if it's fundamental, I mean, I mean, I, I used to tell this story of how we met, we met, we met an econ brand, and they were they were selling uh, pens, like really really high end pens, yeah. and they had retail stores and they had online stores, and they were they were really struggling to grow, and they uh, they they were obsessed. They thought the the answer was to make the website faster. You yeah, hear that quite a lot, right? Yeah, so that you know they'd been you know, googling. You know, someone on someone on some internet, you know, e-commerce guru would said, "Oh, you need to make the website fat. That's why you're failing." Yeah. And they became obsessed with this. Um, spent six months trying to make the website faster, and wait, you know, waiting to roll the new site, you know, the, the new faster site out, expecting it's going to revolutionise their, you know, their revenue. Mm -hmm. And it did nothing. It 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 did nothing. But the worst thing was that in the six months that they'd wasted and the massive amounts of money they'd spent trying to make the website faster, um, the, the, their cash flow and their market had declined even further. They went into administration, um, like after, you know, a couple of months after that. And it, and it was because they hadn't addressed why buy from them in the first place. Their pricing was way out. Mm -hmm. you know, their, um, they had no aim at email capture. They had, they had no reason to buy. They yeah. weren't even saying it was in stock. The delivery was poor. It was fundamental. You know, the customer doesn't buy. And it was, a, it was a bit like, you know, putting a fast service checkout till in a high-end jewelry store and, yeah. and thinking, well, that's what people clearly want. They want to be able to check out faster. So, that, you know, that's what – and it, it's just crazy how, you know, th these sort of things happen. They happen all the time. These, these you know, the e-commerce brands – now that will be going and obsessing over the the wrong thing mm -hmm. because they haven't looked at the fundamentals of what's actually happening which is basically the numbers you know you're totally right what's going it, on it amazes me i mean it's, it's quite difficult in such a fast-paced environment like you said there you know you make the wrong decision within six yeah. months it could diminish like doggy the years. Line completely i mean again in that profitability podcast i think you'd mentioned you know these uh sexy style tools that you you get sold and almost you you have to fulfill as a an econ business over a certain certain size and again you can very much see these sales reps they're very convincing they've got don't mm. get me wrong the tools are fantastic you know you might look and say Christ, my website's much much faster but to your point if you don't understand your customer you don't understand the information you know you don't sift through your reviews to understand what are my customers asking for don't have any feedback mm. survey you don't have any data touch points well again you're fulfilling what your team however big they are four ten fifteen around that table feels is best and it's almost like yeah. well, look hold on a second we're five people and we're servicing as i mentioned a hundred thousand plus customers on site mm -hmm. they're not five buyers <laughs> they're very different yeah. so just start to continue to to almost go back to basics use the models to scale and you'll get there but it is very easy to get caught out and i do yeah, believe is, the yeah. industry there's not much mercy is there to make mistakes you know you make yeah. one or two big mistakes and it's like blooming heck, my bottom line's blown out yeah. for six well I don't know, it moves so fast doesn't it you know that like like it is like dog you know six months is like you know six years yeah absolutely. You know, if, you, so if you're doing the wrong strategy you know the, the the market's just moved on you're like oh my god you know mm -hmm. we just massively lost that that, that growth we had we saw it. yeah it's very easy to fall into yeah we saw it with pandemic commerce didn't we in a sense it was very much that if you were prepared and if you had your almost basics right you could scale you could absolutely yeah. scale 
But yeah. if you didn't, it was very apparent that the players within your industry that understood their customer, understood their models, would take your customer and win that customer because it was such a highly yeah. competitive almost environment. Mm. And it's almost the same now. You know, you've got more players yeah. in the space. You've got well, I think yeah, more intelligent, is, yeah. Uh, more intelligent decision makers, better tooling. You've got AI coming into play, and you think you cannot afford to have the wrong anchor points because you'll continue to fulfil. Yeah, and it, it's. Uh, I mean, also, it's 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 more expensive now. Mm -hmm. You know, the cost of advertising has gone up, and uh, and so you know we're having to fight much harder to convince the customer. Uh, to buy, and so th 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 it's about profit now. This is what I think. Really you know, is. Post COVID, it was about or COVID and post, it was growth. Let's go, go, go. Yeah, and now yeah. people are going. Hang on a minute. I've, you know, I'm not actually making as much profit as I want, and it's now it's about profit. That's what I and having that as the kind of north star of that clarity. Look, this is totally. this is the profit we're making. And this is what this is what we're driving. Totally, um, there's an overall. I believe you give yeah. yourself autonomy with that, don't you, Ian? Because you look at Shopify, for example, that the tech stack is essentially there. You can get bigger and better, yeah. but the tech stack and what you want to achieve from a sort of front end and back end perspective, you got very CDP tools. You got triple whale life family. Mm. You got your again bigger and better tools as you graduate. Maybe a metric Salesforce. But if you don't have that pinpoint right, it just goes back to the numbers and, and you can end up yeah. getting into that game of sexy solution, no profit. Well, hold on a second. All over the place, Why are we yeah. in business? And ultimately, you're not giving your customer what they want, which is to see your product, to get a strong offer, to purchase, and to continue engaging with the brand. Yeah. We're, we are, um, we're retailers. You know, we, we are the right. same as the, as the guy in the shop 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and I think the reason why e-commerce has sort of fallen into this trap of the new shiny distraction yeah. is because it, it was a technological race. Like just by being, you know, go back 20 years, by be, by being the first person of selling online, that was enough. Oh, it's you, didn't need right. any, you just there. You didn't need any strategy yeah. or offer. It was like, you're just there. And then, and then it became... The website's got a bit better, yeah. like with, you know, Magento came along and tried to sort it, you know, sort it out. And the website's got a bit better. And then Shopify came along. Yeah. And now everybody has got, is on the level playing field. We're all on Shopify or something okay. like that. It's no longer a technical race. It's completely meaningless. It's now, it's now about old school retail. So it can turn around because, you know, there's no advantages of having, you know, one website that's you know, it's fundamentally yeah. not enough. You know, you can't just have a website and go, oh, the website's nice. I'm going to buy. Totally. They're going to buy because we've demonstrated, you know, value propositions. We've, exactly. We've, you know, trust and credibility, uh, you know, offer architecture. You know, it's all, it's all kind of fundamental retail stuff. Totally agree. Totally agree. And I don't believe, I mean, maybe you'll nudge the needle, but sort of new sexy sites, unless you have a dire need, which... To be fair, we did it grenade. It just wasn't quite right for our proposition. Mm. Don't get into that game. You know, it's your age-old sort of SEO guy. can be guy. the biggest distraction. Well, exactly. It. You yeah. know, it's your age-old SEO mm. guy saying, we'll get you to the top of uh, top of Google rankings. You say, well, hold on a second. So-and-so is paying X amount for a click. They'll get to the top of rankings because they're paying yeah. Google. So it's almost not fulfilling that prophecy. But we're, we're definitely at a good point in our journey. It's just really now about how we strip back where we need to strip back. Do we have the right stack? Yes, we do. Right, mm. let's use it. Let's use it until the wheels come off. And then once we've used that, I'm yeah. sure we'll look for incrementals, but don't look for that incremental tech stack, I wouldn't say, until you've got your numbers yeah. down to a T, until your numbers tell you, right, here's where we need to be going. Well, it's the numbers, yes. Yeah. It's all it's about the numbers, numbers, isn't it? And like you said, I mean, In you put a bricks and mortar retailer, I found, found this out, sort of speaking to Mondelez more and more, they're shit hot at the day to the input side of things because they need yeah. to be. They need to be. Yeah. I think we need to move more into that direction with e-commerce, as, yeah. as you mentioned. Yeah. It's coming around. It's coming it back. Right. Listen, Cameron, that was awesome. Thank you very much. Not at all. We could chat, we could chat all day. All. We've got a meeting now, actually, haven't we? That's what numbers <laughs> are, ironic. It feels like it's not enough about them, uh, doesn't it? But no, absolute pleasure to come on here. Um, it's been fantastic. Thanks, Cameron. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Take care. Bye.